We're at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Mute on. For a Category 1 meeting, and it's a pre-licensing uh, meeting with Dominion to discuss a proposed relief request for our carbon fiber reinforcement um, at Surrey Power Station Units 1 and 2. I will start by deferring to my supervisor. We'll have everybody um, in introduce themselves. So actually I'll introduce my supervisor. And my name is Karen Cotton Gross, and I am the project manager for Surrey. Mike? I'm Mike Markley. I'm chief for plant licensing branch 2-1 and business operator for Okay, And we can start here. Uh, Laura Thornton, uh, Surrey Design Engineering. Janine Seeley, um, Surrey Project. Jerry Miller, Dominion Corporate Licensing. Corey Dominion, Simpson, Gumpert, and Hager. We are the design engineer for CFRP here in place. Michael Breach, NOR, PBE. Dave Alley, I'm Chief of Component Performance and E and Testing Branch. Jay Collins, I'm a Senior Materials Engineer in Dave's Branch. Okay, you know, TDM, CD, TDM, Mechanical Engineer. Peace, Srinivas, uh, Project Manager. Young Lee, Acting Brian Chief for Mechanical and Civil Engineer. Anna Pridmore, Structural Technologies for the Manufacture of the Specialty Materials. Dan Wittervitt, NRC, Office of the Reactor. Don Bell, Component, Performance, and E, and Techie Branch. Good morning, Leo Nato from Structural Technologies. Bonnie Vassal, Duke, E, and CD. Roger Clayton, uh, Building D and Division Engine. Alpine PPND, uh, NRC. Oh, Anderson, Surrey Engineering Manager. It's Alexander, Structural Technologies Operations. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a Category 1 meeting, and uh, any interested members of the public um, are participating in this meeting via toll-free audio conference call. And at the end of the meeting, you may, you will have an opportunity to ask questions of NRC. So with all that said, I'm going to turn it over to the licensee. Thank you, Gary Miller, again. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having us in to discuss this uh, alternative request that we'll be submitting later on this quarter. Uh, but from the number of people attending, it looks like there's a lot of interest in it. And so it's a pretty neat first of a kind application here in the nuclear side of the, uh, the piping of the nuclear power plant. So it should be an interesting discussion today. Presentation agenda is up on the board there. Uh, we'll go over the purpose of the meeting. We'll overview the process and procedure for the carbon fiber reinforced policy process. Uh, we'll give the scope of what we plan, plan to submit for the proposed alternative request. I'll give you a pretty detailed uh, discussion of the technical basis for the product that's going to be used and how it's going to be installed, uh, the duration of the proposed alternative, which obviously is a requirement of the uh, alternative request. Brett says it'll be a very short discussion because it's first of a kind, so that will go very quick uh, to hit the references and also the regulatory procedures that we'll be using. Next slide, please. Meaning we intend to submit an ISI alternative request in 2016 uh, for the use of a carbon fiber reinforced polymer uh, composite repair system for the internal structural upgrade of selected safety related piping systems. Uh, as I think you know, some of you have been to the station, we have used this on non safety related piping, but just to step up to the safety related piping portion of the system. Uh, at today's meeting, uh, we read Ann Boland's uh, letter where she said it's a good idea to come in for pre submittal meetings for complex uh, processes. This is one of those. We thought it would be good to come in and just have discussions across the table so that we can have a frank discussion of what we're planning on doing, hopefully allay any questions that you have, and uh, proceed on to the so If you don't mind my jumping in, um, I'm a big advocate for free licensing meetings to want to surface the bumps in the road that you may have along the review. And if find or identify any things that just in previous site visit or from what they're doing today may come up as REIs or other questions or challenges we want to surface so they can take it home. Have a pretty likely meeting as the health surface issues that may come up in the review. So uh, otherwise if you sit here and everybody's quiet and they're pretending we're not being very successful. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> we talked about as we walk through the presentation. If you have questions, you want to um, ask them right at the 
time, that's fine. Uh, as you probably can see from this tree that we're carrying around, it's a lot of slides to get through. So we do want to make sure we get through all of them so that you hear the whole uh, panorama of what we're going to be providing here. But clearly we want to attach or attach questions as they come up as we go through. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Anna and she can start walking us through uh, the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Gary. As was mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm Anna Pridmore with Structural Technologies who manufactures the specialty materials and our sister construction company has actually implemented the previous repairs for Surrey. So what we'll be talking about today is carbon fiber reinforced polymers, so CFRP for short. And what carbon fiber reinforced polymers are is it's sheets of reinforcing fabric. In our case, we're using unidirectional carbon fiber fabric that's been saturated with a two-part 100% solids epoxy. That is then manually applied. Uh-oh. Technical difficulty. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. I won't touch it. As you can see here, it's manually applied on the inside of the pipeline. And we'd be putting multiple layers in the longitudinal and the circumferential direction kind of like building up a reinforcement cage on the inside of the pipeline that will, once all the layers have been applied, installed, and cured, now take the place of the host pipe. We would not be relying on the host pipe for the, um, for the majority of the pipe. The only areas it would rely on the host pipe is at the termination end. And that would be, because at some point you always have to transfer the load back to the existing pipe. So it would be a standalone design for the, for the uh, remainder of that. Yeah. These repairs would be done during typical scheduled refueling outages, and for the proposal that we're discussing, it would be a continuous repair for different lengths of the pipeline. And one of the major advantages is that it's able to do that with minimal diameter reduction, so they're able to maintain the similar hydraulic characteristics of the existing pipeline. So the repairs that you're going to talk about for this application are just internal for internal wraps. It's for buried piping or above ground piping as well. All buried. And it's going to be a 360 wrap or is it going to be partial patches? Absolutely. So this is a full 360 degree repair and it's going to be done from certain ends to ends on certain piping sections and it's going to be for very specific pipeline segments. This is not a generic uh, code case equivalent type approval. This is a project specific, pipeline specific alternative request for specific lines and um, uh, in a, several slides I'll be passing it over to Janine who's the project manager and she'll talk through the specific pipelines that would be involved in that scope. Okay, so you're actually talking about rather than just a repair, you're going to actually just install this to reinforce your existing, whether or not it has a problem or not currently right now. This is a proactive upgrade from end to end of the uh, pipeline. Uh, okay. So, this one, this point of a rainbow former is going to take all the structural load. We don't depend on the existing pipe at all. That is correct. This, this pipe though is encased in concrete, a seismic one category structure. So the seismic load will be taken up by the concrete enclosure. So the pipe will be just looking at the operating end. So the pipe will remain, but you're just not relying on it for structural integrity. The pipe here, we're talking 90, the, the picture is 96 inch diameter. What we're going to be do, what you're proposing to be doing is substantially smaller? No. no. The, so this pipeline is actually a, a picture from a 144 inch diameter okay. pipeline for a non-safety related application. Yep. There's been previous applications that we'll get to in the OE that were on 96 inch, 42 and 36 inch on previous non -safety safety applications for Surrey. Okay. Uh, the safety related applications would be within that same range of, there'll be some small 24 inch manhole risers, but the majority would be 36 inch, 42, a little bit of 48, and some 96. Correct. Okay. And so is the reason you're using this as compared to the high density polyethylene that others have used is because of the concrete basement access of quality or what? So we, we can certainly 
probably show it later on. The, the geometry is quite complex, and so my understanding is that the some substantial challenges would be the logistics associated with excavation of the uh, through the floor within the building, and to be able to replace this pipeline. It, it's it's not straightforward geometry. There's lots of bends, laterals, curves, and this is something that allows for in-place replacement equivalent, but doing that in a way that accommodates the existing geometry.
other materials, as we've mentioned, have been used at this point for approximately 20 years for, for buried pipeline infrastructure. And there's been, at this point, over 500 applications of internal CFRP for buried pipeline infrastructure. So this is something that is, um, while it is a first of a kind for safety-related applications for pipelines, there has is a extensive project history of uh, the same project team having successful performance of these applications within the industry for non-safety pipelines. Okay, I'm Janine Steele, I'm the project manager for Surrey Power Station, and I'm going to go over the scope of our proposed alternative request, and we'll go into more detail as we go through the slide. So, uh, our piping includes Surrey Unit 1 and 2, our safety related surf water system inlet piping, and the service water system pipe headers that come off the surf water line. Our anticipated construction time will be spring 2018 and fall 2025. It kind of corresponds with our outages, and I have a slide that kind of color-coded to depict the various um, installations. Our requested date for proposal is within 12 months of the submittal date. And then it's a little aggressive, but we will do whatever we can to facilitate it for you to help you all. Our American Society of Mechanical Engineers has me code class three. Next slide, please. It is staying on that slide. And since okay. we're on dates as far as timeline, uh, it would be useful if you could identify um, the dates when you would prefer to have the review completed by a certain period that you needed to start what you want to do in the spring of 2018 as far as when, when you would need it within their spring is kind of a longer time period, what, what you're looking at as far as um, needs or something of that nature. 12 months is definitely what we strive to. It's our goal. It's, it's what we uh, tend to do. But knowing those dates will help focus also, you know, where we're going and what we're trying to look at as far as function. That's a good point. We'll definitely include that in the alternative request. Be very specific to that. Thank you. What's the expected actual submittal date? Opening for in November. We're not starting from ground zero yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, very good. And you can see from our presentation there. Okay, um, going on with our scope, our effective piping at Surrey Power Station Unit 1 and Unit 2. We have a 90 foot diameter surf water system inlet piping. It goes from the station inlet canal and goes to the main steam condenser. Actually, goes on the other side of the condenser in the amber chapter. Our piping is 24 inch, 30 inch, 36, 42, and 48. And as Anna said, the 24 inch are like man waves. The 30 inch are just risers going to heat exchangers. And then um, it also supplies the supply lines, which I'll show you in a, a diametric drawing in a little bit. The supply lines are going to the research heat exchangers, research spray heat exchangers, DC heat exchangers, and the CC heat exchangers. So you'll see that in a little bit in our diametric diagram. All of these lines are concrete encased and buried. So they're all in concrete encased and buried. We do have a couple areas where we have risers coming up, uh, going to the condenser, and that's the only area that's outside of the uh, concrete. So the concrete encasement of the piping was designed for seismic category one structure to provide their seismic support for these pipes. The piping was fabricated in accordance with the American Water Works Association, AWWA, B201, and the standard specification for electric fusion welded steel pipeline with carbon steel material conforming to the American Society for Testing. That's A283 grade B, Bravo. The piping was designed and installed in accordance with our B31 in 1967, our power of piping code. And a detailed listing of piping sections with uh, Anna showed you a little bit of the design that goes, will go into the code case. And that um, shows you the pipe numbers, the sizes, the configurations. You need a diagram for 
HP will be on there, uh, preliminary construction schedule and function. So there's a lot of detail that will come in with that. Next slide. So our, our applicable code addition and addenda are ASME Section 11, and that's the rules for in-service inspection for our nuclear power plant components. That's a 2, 2004 edition, no addenda. Our applicable code requirements during the process of repairing the carbon fuel piping, Article IWA 4000, subparagraph IWA 4221-Bravo, and this requires that items used during a repair or placement activity meet the original construction code. So that's the reason for this request. The use of the carbon fiber reinforced polymer piping for the ASME application is a recent technology which Anna went over. The improvement which was not available during the construction 1960s, 1970s to meet our original construction code. There are no provisions in our ASME Section 11 or in an approved code case for installing the carbon fiber reinforced polymer piping as a replacement for our carbon steel piping during repair or replacement activities. So Dominion, therefore, is submitting an ISI alternative request and the NRC approval to use carbon fiber reinforced polymer material for repair or replacement activities. This is a little small, but you can see the color coding. And the first one at the top, right under Unit 1 Legend, this is just components affected by Unit 1. You can see Unit 1 2018 is spring outage, and that's our planned outage. And that's why, you know, the year turnaround. This will be our first installation. That is the orange line. And you can see it starts at the canal intake, goes up to the condenser, and then from the condenser it'll go a little bit, it's like um, an elbow, and it goes to the amortep barrel. And then from the other lines you can see, but our final one is Unit 1 2025 fall outage, and that is the green line, and that goes to the CC heat exchanger. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. As we, as we look at these uh, drawings and as you've broken them up over the time periods, is there um, a particular reason or trickiness associated with one as far as being more difficult to be able to do or more design or a different type of relief request or is the first relief request really generically attempting to bound everything and then the later one? Anything that the first set of work that you're doing is a subset of what you would need necessarily to break off for other things down the road? If the answer is no, I think for an alternative request, you need to have everything in place and approve before you start. If, okay. If magically the, the plant was down for a sufficient time frame to fix all the pipes at the same outage, we could have fixed them all in the same time frame. Okay. This is it's purely from a scheduling logistics to, Im to avoid impact of the plant. So essentially it's one giant project, it's just done in multiple phases to accommodate plan out of schedules. One, one request covering the entire time period from 2018 to 2025. That's correct. Right. Right. It's just different duration right. where the work's being implemented. Now, for those of us who have the opportunity to go to the plan, November. November. I went on my birthday. It was, it was a very nice birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where were we then relative to what we're looking at here? Or is there a way to... See those lines at the very top of the condenser with the arrow? Yes. You were in that line before it went into the top. Right. Okay. Well, not that far. But that is, it's just straight yeah. line. It's actually, you know, uh, it's 45. So, so the, the pink and the orange lines there are, are just on the other side of that valve where you couldn't... On the other side of the condenser. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. You mentioned from 2018 to 2025, the valve uh, uh, extends to different inspection uh, level. Yeah. So in your request, you may want to say that you were asking for... Yes, we did. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
question is, I don't know how we're going to do that. Yeah, that's we'll, that's figure, we'll figure out. That, that, that is not going to be a problem. We're going to figure out how to do that. <laughs> that's a good point. If we note that later on in the slide. But that's because we, we have first I only one. Right. 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 We, we have to figure out how to write the request. But I'm not. We'll figure out. We'll figure out a way to deal with that concept. That's not going to be a problem. No, they need to incorporate it. They, they, they right. do need to incorporate their submittal. We'll figure out how to deal you with it. You know when your ISI interval changes over. Yes, yeah. we yeah. It's in another slide. Okay. Uh, but you see Unit 2 is a bit more aggressive. We don't have the CC heat exchanger line, which is our final one in 2025 on Unit 2. And um, there's just three, 2018, all out, it's 2021 and 20. It's 2020. Oh, okay. I'm Lars Gordon. I'm with the Design Engineering Group, Mechanical, and at Surrey Power Station. I'll be right for design change and the smell. What you see before you is a uh, drawing of the pipe. Uh, this particular is the inlet for the, for the condenser, one of them. You'll see the little manway up there, and then the 45 off the header, uh, actually with this uh, spray. That's another drawing. But uh, this is the kind of detail we, we are proposing to give you, uh, or will give you. And you'll see we have a pipe designation, the pipe number, the diameter, the length of the pipe, the design of the uh, carbon fiber for that particular pipe, and then any other additional uh, details we might want to point out to you, such as 45 or anything. So all this pipe is in case. Uh, only, and in this particular case, the only thing exposed to the surface is uh, right at the flat part. That's where the uh, condenser inlet valve is. Uh, that is so the, the ground is probably about three foot, and that's our transition point from the carbon fiber back to the steel. But all of our transition points, with the exception of the inlet of this pipe, which goes to a concrete pipe, is uh, go to a flange. It comes off the existing like this. So our termination points will be exposed without pit on this amber tap pit for our transition points. We want to pay particular attention to fire safety issues uh, as you come out of the concrete or as you come above ground. This is all internal. Okay. One of the things that we had an issue had had a, a looking back issue with HPE is that in one of the one of the applications there were stubs came into the building that were not appropriately fire protected at the time of the installation. What we're going to be looking for is to ensure that if if we get into a spot where we have to consider fire protection issues, that you have them appropriately addressed. So we'll be looking for either it's in concrete or it's out of concrete but fire is not an issue or it's out of concrete and here's how we're addressing okay. the fire safety so issues. example he's talking about like Callaway in the room so you're worried about a fire in the room. Okay. Yeah, of course we recognize that this is not the same scenario because there's steel pipe on the outside right. as opposed to just a plastic pipe. Right. But it is something we're going to be wanting to to see. We're, we're going to be wanting to see how you are addressing that concept. Very good. How many are circular? Are you stopping short of the bellows in the urban building, or where are you? Where we're stopping? See that flange there? That's the flat part of the pipe? Yeah, that's where we're stopping. But our transition point is below there. We're going to coat the whole pipe, but our uh, termination point will be below that, where we will have uh, sufficient steel to transfer the load from the carbon fiber to the steel structure. How much concrete is this actually encased in as it goes along? Is it it's, it's just a the foundation? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here you'll see the, uh, this is a construction flow from 1967. That's the plant was being built. And you can see the inlet piping there with some of the rebar. And the section there is the uh, encasement for this particular uh, pipe. Uh, you see this 
quite a bit of rebar and a lot of concrete. Uh, everything you see there in the picture is going to be concrete. Uh, going, but we're not taking this up. No. <laughs> going back to the previous one, uh, as far as you were saying, that's what the amount of information that you were looking towards providing. Yeah. Um, you got the pipe length, but I think I'm going to be just questioning as far as where we are, as far as where it's required to adhere and the length of adherence. So if you would be able to identify the adherence places or the areas in which you have adherence, based upon your branch connections, your other items that you guys would consider, I think that would be potentially useful for us down the road for questions I'm kind of formulating now. But and, and would help me understand how big of a thing we've got to evaluate as far as One item of note that we're not really showing here, this is just more representative. We would have detailed project and pipe specific drawings. So every single pipe that would have it would have every single lateral connection detail and then a, a social appropriate call out to how each one of those would be addressed. And, and um, when, when Roscoe from SGH gets into the design, he'll show some of those representative details as well. Okay, well, uh, with the uh, fiber pipe transfer the load to the car, I know you take the load. And then the rest of the pipe, when you compare it, if you have our uh, bed, so that you can all watch. Yeah, we have a procedure to press the interior of the pipe before we can clean it. Part of the intrusion, we have to press at that point. So where you are relying on the weld to be transferred to the pipe? Is that a mechanical connection or an adhesion connection? It's an adhesion connection. Okay. So um, one of the things we'll get into a little bit later on in the design slide is that we've done different testing showing the appropriate adhesion between the specific rewrap carbon fiber composites and epoxies and um, what level of surface profile and would be necessary to achieve the, the appropriate adhesion at those locations. All the instances where there's risers and other penetrations in the pipe, are you guys going to detail how you're handling the design around those areas? Yeah. You know, the cold case, maybe I haven't gotten that page yet, but it doesn't detail that. So this is a similar concept um, with, you know, the original challenges with the HDPE alternative request, which is that if we were to come to you and submit, here's the code case, please approve, that would not be appropriate, and that's not the intent here. Right. So the code case provides guidance for a lot more generic applications. What we're, we'd be doing is for every single connection detail, there'd be um, associated um, drawings that we detail how those layers would go, and, and we'll show a representative sketch uh, of what that looks and I must apologize because what I did was when I was asking people that like what's the associated here, I thought this was going to be a subset of the code case. Uh, and that it's significantly different than the scope of what we're talking about in the code case. So um, it, hopefully all the tests will be similar so we'll be able to 